departed. Um, our next speaker is Dr. Rafis Abazov. Uh, Dr. Abazov has more than 20 years of teaching, researching, and managing experience at Columbia University, Johns Hopkins, Al Farabi, Kaznu, and Kaznaru universities. He has published extensively and is currently a professor as well as director of the International Institute for Green and Sustainable Development and founding director of the MBA program at Kaznaru. Uh, his presentation is titled Sustainable Development Goals and Green Campus Project. The case of Kaznaru is in knowledge research transfer from academia to organizations. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I have a case study to present and I am waiting for my uh, presentation to pop up on the screen and I will start. So basically, I will, this uh, maybe a couple of words about the background of this presentation. Yes, that's correct. It was prepared for QS Conference on Sustainable Development, this Anglo Sustainable Development, in 2022. And uh, I try to develop a case study of green campus uh, concept or implementation of green campus concept in the case of Kaznaru. So basically, uh, here we are talking about uh, a mission of university. A mission of university, uh, as we know, actually we have many missions like education, science, and right now uh, third mission, we should talk about a lot about, it's social responsibility to be a good uh, corporate citizen in, in the community, in the locality, where it is. Uh, with this idea, we decided to develop a concept, a uh, green campus. And uh, talk about uh, innovative ways to include, involve students, and young professionals, young scholars, young educators, in the process of using knowledge and research expertise uh, into for practical purposes. Idea is uh, from, uh, I mean, if you talk about recent development in field of education, uh, we could see that uh, recently we talk not only about like pure teaching as in the past, not even only about pure like lecturing and having seminars, but trying to apply knowledge in specific areas and specific fields. And uh, we talk a lot about different ways. And uh, my approach is uh, actually it will be good to develop a combination of traditional curricular activities and extracurricular activities. Basically, when I talk about uh, green campus or the, the developing, talking about sustainable development within university framework, we are talking a lot about extracurricular activities. Our theoretical approach is theory of change. Uh, which focus on methodologies and the ways how to promote uh, and achieve social changes. And here we talk about, uh, from theory of change point of view, we talk about targeted interventions to address gaps and in monitor progress and evaluate effectiveness. Uh, with this in mind, we had a couple of research questions. How should we react to climate change at the city and campus level? how should we react to the increasing high level of air pollution in our districts? It probably happens in many campuses around the world, not only in, in, in Kazakhstan. And how should we react to the disappearance of green parks around the, our counties? And Agriculture University is perfect place to be. And I believe uh, our neighborhood, Agriculture University, uh, KIMAP, uh, MAP and the German University, actually, we are in good neighborhood to develop a way how to collaborate to make this area greener. And when we talk about uh, sustainable development and green campus, we have one angle. We need to talk about education for sustainable development. Basically, uh, Minister of Education for about 10, 12 years was talking about introducing uh, courses, programs, uh, and uh, different activities at university level. Uh, promoting education for sustainable development. Unfortunately, due to many reasons, uh, we have difficulty in introducing proper courses on sustainable development at university level. And we had special research in uh, taking case of Kazakhstan, why it's happening, how it's happened. Why we talk about sustainable development? 
why we talk about preparing professionals to enter professional world to become leaders of the like uh, cities, uh, like districts, uh, counties, provinces, oblasts, and uh, nations uh, with our with good knowledge of sustainable development. That's the main like mandate of university, but unfortunately we cannot do it. Why? So we thought, okay, let's talk about sustainable development. We try to introduce. We failed last semester, let me admit. Uh, we still need to get a lot of approvals from different entities, but we hope to we will do it and we may develop as a model. But we decide, okay, if we fail in traditional uh, track, our tra trajectory of this introducing education for sustainable development, let us use extracurricular activities to talk about sustainable development. So we have, uh, we develop and we had uh, this couple of series of discussions with students, faculty members about a project. So what kind of project we would like to have? Of course, you would like to have an input from uh, or inputs from our students. We would like to have social impact. You would like to have environmental impact, and you'd like to have economic impact. Uh, after all, my approach is in public policy, everything boils to policies, to our actions, and to money. Do we have budget? We have something to support our words. No budget. Uh, it's still beautiful presentation on the screen and uh, difficult to move forward. So. Uh, Next step, and uh, my link to China. Uh, basically, about 10 years ago, Tian University, it's, uh, I believe, one of the largest universities in, the, in that particular area, uh, with one, about 100,000 students. They initiated Silk Road uh, University Association, I think, something like that. I will give you exact title. So uh, one of the reasons behind it, it was in, it's, the university is in Tian, and we are in Almaty. We had a couple of partners in different cities around China. We talk about developing smart campus for smart, sustainable cities. So the logo was, as usual, Chinese love logos. Uh, and the mo sorry, motto. motto was a beautiful logo and nice motto. In the middle of smart city should be smart university. So the idea was, OK, if we use example of large campus, and the Xi'an University has a large campus, uh, at that time, I was with Al Farabi University, which has the largest campus, the largest campus in Central Asia, not only in Kazakhstan. If you develop a way how to manage sustainably our campus, we can give examples, we can give tech, de deliver technologies, know-how, different policy approaches uh, to our uh, smart to our cities to make sure they become smarter and uh, greener. So this is a whole concept uh, behind linking campus and the city. So if you can develop some technology. And remember at the beginning, I said, our main purpose and main goal, we have a lot of scholars. We have a lot of uh, students, those young, young researchers, those who do a lot of research in different fields. In our case, in the field of agriculture, environment, uh, forestry. But how to transfer that particular knowledge into practical practicality of having activities and actions uh, in Almaty environment? Uh, so basically, uh, okay. when we talk about uh, university, Kazakh National Agrarian Research University, we can talk about small campus, which is here next door, from like just t t basically taking one block. However, the university is the largest landowner, the largest landowner in Kazakhstan, because it has, uh, they call it pilot research uh, plots in every oblast, in every region. Sometimes in the southern Kazakhstan, smaller, a couple of uh, hectares. In the northern Kazakhstan, like Kustanay, uh, Akmola, and some other areas, huge, a couple of hundreds of hectares. So it's uh, the way how we can uh, basically train our students to learn more about agriculture, to learn more about environment, at the same time to talk about some innovations which we might come from our professors and to implement in the field. In our case, here in this campus, for uh, purpose of development, greener city or smart and more sustainable Almaty, in uh, our case of different plots, um, uh, to develop other solutions in other areas. How much time do you have? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay, I'll give you a case study, a small case study, within the case study. Almaty, within the uh, past uh, two or three years, the temperature in Almaty city within the Golden Triangle and the, like, the downtown area, increased by 1.52 centigrade. Uh, the projection is it will increase for another two. 
implication from agricultural point of view. Many trees will die. Existing trees, which are, were around for decades, some of them for centuries, actually uh, they will not sustain sudden jump of the temperature, like between two and four centigrade. So uh, we need to replace them. How to replace them? They need to do experiments. And we have a couple of uh, case studies. We have uh, small, uh, like business incubator, and we have small startup working with, uh, what's it called, this very fancy name, micro-cloning of plants. <laughs> Idea is to take existing plants which are like more adapted to this uh, uh, level of pollution, to these temperatures, and replace dying trees with different trees. So if you look around this Kunaiva street, there is a couple of streets. Look, many the, the, the trees are unhealthy. You could just obviously observe them in the spring and the summer. So they need to be replaced. With what? An idea is to find better solution. So we plan to experiment with a Canadian um, variation of uh, spurs. Uh, and then we can, like variation of tree coming from Uzbekistan. I mean, areas which are hotter, but those trees can live not only in the mountains, but in the city environment and grow faster. Not 100 years but uh, much faster than it uh, usually takes for alpine trees to grow. So this is a whole idea behind like, a couple of our assumed uh, activities in case of microcloning and uh, working with different trees. So uh, saying that what we do, we have, uh, we discuss uh, different uh, angle, from different angles, sustainable development issues in class, this is a part of our education, we try to make sure that in our in like formal environment, people start talking, or professors, or educators, start to, and students start to more talking more about uh, sustainable development. Actually, according to local regulation, we have to follow local Karastani reg regulation about uh, practical training, uh, internships. So, uh, and in the case of agrarian university, it's always in the in the field. So we go, our students go to farms to greenhouses somewhere to have the practical training in the field of agriculture. And idea is if and when we give them some new ideas, some innovative ideas, how to manage it better, better, they can try, they can practice, and they have some expertise and experience, and after graduation, they may take it uh, into the future. And our extracurricular activity, we try to develop different forms. And in the spring, I hope we will have partnership with SkiMap, we have a concept of planting 1,000 trees per faculty. So if we can manage to do it, it will be a good, a good contribution to making the city greener and making our campuses greener. So we had discussion with Akimat, May office in Almaty. They might allocate a small plot of land to, 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 uh, to, to do it, to get our 1,000 trees. So, uh, but that's not enough. So what about our everyday habit? So you got, gave a good example about shower, taking shower. Shamefully, I take shower twice a day. So I take taxi to come here. But actually, I'm trying to uh, be like socially, uh, environmentally responsible person and try to teach our students to make sure they have a smaller footprint in our environment. And here we talk about, hey guys, let's plant trees, okay, let's grow flowers. Our campus is full of trees, many of them experimental trees. We exper our university experiments with different type of trees, making sure that when and uh, if uh, Akimat or mayor office needs, uh, like city council needs new trees to, uh, to plant in the streets, replacing dying trees. So we can say, like, look, we already experimented within our campus with a different type of trees and flowers. So this is uh, the way how we'd like to involve students. Reuse and recycle. Unfortunately, we, we could see that uh, uh, students use a lot of uh, single-use uh, many things, from cans to packs. So we try to make sure that they start reduce amount of waste and recycle more. Uh, walk, bike, or go electric. And here it's also ideas, uh, like many students live not far away. It's within a, a, a one kilometer perimeter in the dormitories or so having apartments. And very often they love uh, having taxis, you know, it would be posh boys, posh girls, just one kilometer. So we try to promote ideas. Come on, it's 
no harm uh, for health. It's like you're good for health and nothing wrong from social point of view, from your status point of view, to walk, to bike and go electric. And I think uh, university has special deal for students to have reduced, uh, how to say, fees for renting electric scooters. So one of the ways. Of course, learn, study and train about SDGs. I talk about it. A volunteer for SDGs, we try to develop, uh, within our like concept of Green Campus, concept of uh, volunteering, which is, it's not very new, but relatively new for Kazakhstan. So basically, within our, it's like uh, angle for agrarian university, we talk about uh, making sure that students have assignments. They work only just to get a grade. Oh, we, we have a nice grade, but something uh, what is useful for them to learn about, or maybe they can use for developing their local communities. 70% of our students come from different provinces of Kazakhstan. They're not Almaty or city guys, city boys and city girls. So they might have some challenges in their like localities and might discuss with their professors and develop assignments, how to solve or address those challenges. And we have labs and experimental plots. When they go to the field, we try, we actually idea is to make sure that they talk about traditional way of planting tomatoes, trees, uh, whatever, cucumbers, uh, potatoes, grain, uh, raising cattle, but maybe talking about maybe best practices from around the world, uh, for best ideas from around the world, basically making sure that they can transfer knowledge and technology into the real field activities. And uh, we try to make sure that students get uh, deeper knowledge about SDGs and about different issues, having uh, like our guest speaker series, inviting local and international experts uh, to talk about uh, sustainable development and new ways how to save environment. Promise, two minutes? Mm -hmm. Do you have enough? So basically, I mentioned to you, to you that our plans, so plans are plans, but uh, you know, we, we can talk a lot, but uh, what about real activities? So we managed to make sure uh, to mobilize our students to, for planting trees. We have large field, uh, which belongs to a plot of land, it belongs to university outside the city. So last year, students went there to plant different type of trees, some of them experimental, uh, to make sure they have practical expertise how to do it. Uh, actually, I have an idea, I have a dream. In the past, I taught capstones. It's uh, like Columbia University is very famous for and very well known for developing this particular approach in teaching students. So we try to develop capstones, making sure that students will team up with students from other universities and uh, work on real projects for real entities. Right now, we're working on, for one project, on one project for most. Most is uh, the largest business incubator in Kazakhstan, I believe. That is a claim. They have at least say, eight floors of the building with all kind of uh, uh, f space, office space for rent and uh, uh, to work on it. So next, uh, electric bi biking. So we try to promote and then students involved in various innovative activities, learning about different innovations. And final slide, two slides. Summary. Uh, basically, we believe that uh, if we develop proper uh, concept of green campus, if we develop proper procedures how to develop uh, and implement activities on sustainable development goals, if we develop curricula, which we can share, uh, pilot curricula we can share with other universities, so it will, we have an opportunity to upscale this particular co concept of green uh, campus covering all many campuses in, in Almaty and then in Kazakhstan. Uh, just when one remark, we had the Green Campus project in Al Farbi University. Unfortunately, I mean, fortunately, it was around for about five, seven years. It really disappeared during COVID time, and idea to revive it in post-COVID time. And I believe we believe in partnerships. So KIMEP, uh, German University, German Kazakh University, uh, and uh, IT University around the corner will be good partners. Thank you.
you know that in the nature, the forest, for example, natural forest, have uh, this biodiversity of trees, grass, you know, bushes, and so on. Do you try it to apply to your project or? Because, for example, in Almaty, we have mainly, I don't know the names of Russian. Uh, may I speak Russian because I don't know names of trees in the question. А у нас в Алмате в основном посажены вот эти вот каракач, тополя, и это же называется как-то... Лиственные деревья. Нет, в смысле того, что это монокультура. А я просто спрашиваю, вы ну, прививаете тоже в этом проекте polycultural types of trees, community plant? different types of trees, not only what we have right now in Almaty. Because I know that our mayor city, they're trying to plant many trees, but for example, last spring I saw the planting or along a pie street, but many of them died simply. And I think it's mostly because they used only one type of tree. And uh, uh, natural forest, for example, why it exists so long? Simply because there is a, synergy of types of different species in the forest. That's why it can protect itself from different factors. That's why I'm asking uh, how many types of trees and how many other species are you going to apply in your project? Okay, uh, it comes from Akimat, but Akimat recently, in the past, they believe they know everything. Yes. Now they say, uh, we may not know everything maybe we will use your expertise. So they approached the university and a couple of other entities, those who deal with, uh, how to say, this concept of greening the city, of uh, planting trees in the city. So lately, according to latest plan, if it's in the strategic plan of city development, they will have money. If not, no money. So basically they put in strategic plan and they allocated some, uh, some budgets for planting new trees. I believe this year they plan to uh, don't quote me on this particular number, 100,000 trees. But what type of trees. And they decided to, I think they decided to abandon no more uh, poplar. They said, nope, нет, больше нет тополя, no more poplar. And they decided to focus more on uh, uh, different type of trees. They, exper they experimented, they gave me Latin name of the trees. I don't know, <laughs> I'm not biologist, so I cannot say the, the name, in, not, not in Russian, not in English but they actually experiment with different type of trees. So making sure that they uh, have variety of the tree trees in the city. So for example, if one variety cannot survive, second variety will survive, so they can replace. If they put all, that's every, like everything in one basket, only one or two varieties, if they die, entire city will be without uh, like uh, trees. So they said to have four, five or six varieties. Mm -hmm. And some of them are new. No more popular. You said that there were different projects where they were like planting out in that area that the, the university owned and maybe around the city. Who takes care of the trees after they're planted? Because in China there was a big problem like when they had the Great Green Wall where they planted lots of trees and, it was, and then they, no one watered them later. No one died. Um, and then they kind of came up with that, then made villagers kind of. You know, then they came up with a system where people, not just strangers come in and plant them from Beijing, but mm -hmm. local people. And there, you know, there's been really good reforestation projects now in North China. In new cohort of students. <laughs> I mean, for example, current students, they plant these trees, and then the new cohort of students come, and yeah. then Rafis will have another project saying, like, we should take care of all these existing trees. So who's the nanny that keeps taking care of Okay, a uh, big picture. Karasan has the same problem. There's a very famous case study when in Atarawabla they planted one million tree. Five percent of survival. That's uh, almost all trees, 950,000 of them died. Because they had problem with Arau. They planted like they called Saksaul, a special type of tree. I forgot the Latin name or English name. So basically they planted, I think, over the past 20 years, 1.5 million. Uh, rate of survival, 1% uh, in some areas and 5% in other areas. Can you imagine? One million tree, only like 5,000 survive. So, uh, and here was the same problem. 
and I went to the department of green department. Sorry, this, if I, is it okay with you? Two more minutes. I went to green department and say, oh, this department of prison. Because entire pre former, like the chief, deputy chief, the deputy deputy chief, they were like right now under trial. So they bought actually cheap uh, to, like uh, products and they actually didn't use proper like companies to plant them. They hired very cheap company to do very cheap job and got cheap result, no trees. So basically right now they said, okay, we learn from the lesson and right now they're trying to hire professional company, which is more expensive to plant uh, uh, like better trees, not like 20 centimeters or like five to 10 inches, but longer one, which might survive better. And they uh, actually allocated funds to take care of trees. They have special, I believe, kind of gardener, he or she is supposed to take care of a certain amount, a number of trees. Don't quote me, maybe 100, maybe 200, but basically they allocated a person or people who are responsible for say, some sections of the city. So if you, like last fall, you could see that some people were walking around, yes, you know, like marking trees and looking after trees. So I believe they learn lessons and they try to do better now. Mentioned, uh, you've mentioned cloning. Micro cloning. You've mentioned cloning. Micro cloning. Uh, <laughs> very, well, a very ancient uh, procedure in forestry and agriculture called grafting. Mm -hmm. And the problem with it is that it has caused us to develop monocultures which are of the same, same genotype which in turn results in our plants being very vulnerable to diseases and changes in climate. Uh, if we're going to proceed with those green initiatives using the same old techniques, we're uh, going to stumble into the same problems. So how are we going to address the issue of biodiversity and yeah, actually making sure our new trees stick? Mm -hmm. Okay, if, if you remember, I'm not biology, biologist. <laughs> I'm we a public policy. We want you to be a biologist. Uh, uh, no, let me finish my sentence. You're going to do another degree. So, the uh, uh, whole idea I came to university saying, let's commercialize because we established MBA program promoting entrepreneurship, sustainable development. So, basically, I, I wanted to sell it. Uh, in other words, to commercialize it. So, it's very like a uh, buzzword right now in Kazakhstan. Uh, so, basically, and to, to sell it, I have to learn biology. I learned a lot, not everything. So I would probably have like at the C, C, C plus, if I sit on the biology exam, uh, like going straight to the point. Microcloning allows very fast, very quick rep uh, replication of healthy trees in a very isolated environment uh, with a specific uh, 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 set of um, chemicals, vitamins, and fertilizers, it allows very quickly to grow certain, uh, like to grow up trees, bushes, flowers. Take maybe, for traditional method, what you mentioned, you need one branch to have uh, like three branches. With microcloning, you take one meter branch, you can you create maybe uh, 50 or 100 like uh, samples, like uh, some sample of trees. Uh, and because for first 12 months, they're special in uh, vacuum, in isolation. They grow free of diseases. This is the most important part. Like Almaty Airport is dying, not only because it was, it was neglected, but also because some new diseases came from foreign countries and this Almaty Airport is not, cannot, uh, that doesn't have resistance to that foreign diseases. So most of the like 100 or 200,000 Almaty Airport trees died, half of them within two years. So idea is, you take a healthy tree in a special environment, grow up for 12 months free of disease, and then you can plant. So basically you can take any branch, any trees, any, anything, and you can replicate them, microclone them within 12 months. So that gives us opportunity to, uh, how to say, to have variety and diversity. And ideas, for example, uh, sorry, just half a minute. <laughs> My favorite topic now. <laughs> I'm becoming a little bit biologist. Uh, Sievers tree, do you remember? Uh, Yabaka Sivirsa, Sivirs apple tree. 
This is native of Kazakhstan. It's also dying out. So right now, uh, city council decided to have, uh, to, uh, trying to find uh, sponsors, those who will sponsor uh, planting silver tree, uh, like in the city. So if they cannot survive in the nature, they will they will try to do it in the city. But how to get healthy like uh, uh, branches? Actually, idea is to order with our micro cloning. We will identify healthy trees. We'll take some samples and microclone several thousand of them for uh, for the city. It's not cheap, but at least it's uh, how to say but contributes to biodiversity and environment. I think the whole idea was uh, how to make these trees uh, sustain, sustainable for diseases in the nature. Because when you're talking about these technologies, it means that you. Uh, grow them in very protected environment, so they are used to this protected environment, and when they go to the nature, it means that they will not have natural uh, protection, yes. immunity to diseases. That's why we're asking, how do you, how are you going to uh, develop the immunity in the nature? Do you have half a minute? I think probably yeah. we should let you discuss okay. among we'll yourselves because <laughs> I want to introduce our next speaker. Okay. But thank you, that was very interesting.